I'll step away for just one second. Close the door. We still have people streaming in. That's wonderful. We're at 56 people. So, wow. <laughs> well, I thought that's truly amazing given that it's a Friday in December and that we're towards the last weeks of the semester. Yeah. So it's really fantastic. And there's more people coming in. Wonderful. Great way to spend a Friday. That's nice. <laughs> Love it. It is actually. It, it truly is. I needed a, a break from marking, Emily. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> it is. Absolutely. Okay, so I will begin. So there may be more people joining in, but I'm just going to get things rolling. So my name is Louisa Lambrex, and uh, I'm from Algonquin College, and I'm part of the small group of people from the Educational Technology Committee that puts together these webinars. And I also want to mention that we have um, Gina uh, here as well, Gina Catanazo, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. And she's actually the, um, the champion of you know, this whole initiative. And uh, we really owe a debt of gratitude for all of the hard work that she's done in you know, conceiving of this idea and launching it and making it work like such a well-oiled machine. There's also um, Philippe, Philippe Dumac uh, from La Cité. And uh, so it's the three of us that uh, have been uh, organizing these, these sessions. So today's session, we are talking about the liquid syllabus, the first to making a connection and reducing student anxiety. Really looking forward to this session. And it happens to be our last webinar in a, a series uh, that we've delivered this fall. And I want to mention that there's more webinars to come in the future, and I'll show you some information on how, about, um, actually, if you would like to sign up as a facilitator, it's open for anyone who wishes to facilitate, and I'll share some more information about that uh, shortly. But I wanted to, first of all, uh, describe what the ETC, the Educational Technology Committee, is all about. So if you've attended these webinars before, then this might be a, a repeat message. But for those of you who do not know about the ETC, we are a provincial committee. We make up um, representatives from all of the colleges in Ontario. And uh, we meet on a regular basis to talk about um, digital learning, so technology-enhanced uh, learning and teaching. And so every college has a representative. And as a group, we do um, a lot of collaboration, uh, we meet regularly to talk about each other's, you know, college issues. And there's major initiatives that we manage, including there's this webinar series, and we have the Advancing Learning Conference that um, is held. So we do have a virtual conference uh, that is coming, um, and Seneca will be the host of that, so very exciting. So here's the link to our Educational Technology Committee, and I'm going to put the address in the chat. There it is. You can launch it and it'll be bookmarked if you already have it. And here you'll find access to not only where you can sign up for future webinars, but uh, we also record all of the sessions. So feel free to share those recordings or you know go back to them if you wanted to see them again. So these are the sessions that we have offered before, and we're gonna do this again in the winter time. So as mentioned, we are looking for facilitators in the winter. So it's a great opportunity. Uh, I think many of us um, here in this session, I, I recognize a few names and I know that there have been folks that have presented before. It's a really wonderful opportunity. So I highly encourage you to, I mean, if you have an idea to share, um, put in a submission, and um, so let me have the facilitator sign up, and I will also add that specific link. I'll grab it here. 
just so it's handy. But we, out, we welcome all kinds of topics. And lucky, you know, the, the breadth and depth of topics have been really fantastic. So, you know, put in a proposal. It doesn't have to be a lot of work. We're pretty casual. And it's just a great opportunity to share some, some knowledge that you have and to connect with colleagues around the, the, the province. So you'll see there be the ability to sign up for um, 2021. So you can put in your proposals now. You don't have to wait until January. Lastly, uh, there is an opportunity to sign up for our mailing list. So you can stay tuned and uh, receive notice, notifications about um, our, our webinar offerings. So I'll add that to the chat box as well. But I'm going to turn things over now to, to our hosts. And um, I'll allow them to introduce uh, what they're talking about and who they are. So please take it away. Thank you. And I'll stop sharing. OK. So this one. All righty. Good. So. All right. Kim, you want to start? Yes. Yeah, so uh, welcome to our session, uh, Liquid Syllabus, the first step to making a connection and reducing uh, student anxiety. Uh, we initially presented this at TESS 2020. And so we're so excited to share it with you as well. Um, you can probably, yeah. Uh, so my name is Kim Carter. I'm a professor in the business school at Conestoga College in Kitchener, Ontario. And I'm Lisa Coster. I'm also a, a business professor at the Conestoga College. And I'm Marie Rutherford. I'm at Georgian College and I'm a professor in business and management with a specialty in office administration. So one of the challenges uh, we were thinking about when we first thought about going online this fall uh, for many, for my learners, um, this is their first year, first semester, and they may not have chosen to be online, as I'm sure we can all relate to. And so we started to think about uh, the things we were concerned about was how we were going to engage with those learners and how we were going to build community within our classes. And so we thought about the different things that you can see listed here on the screen, but I'm going to just pop into the chat and answer garden. And uh, so we thought about things like distractions, not the fact that they weren't going to be attending physical classes, they might feel disengaged and alone, and they might be afraid uh, to ask for help. So I would um, ask you, invite you to enter what challenges you anticipated to having engagement with online in the fall. And you can go ahead, I've popped the answer garden into the chat. And uh, Lisa will show you here, it's going to populate your answers. I just got to bring this over. There we go. Oh, wrong one. It's <laughs> yeah, and some people are choosing to put it in the chat. That's fine too. You can either go to the answer garden, the link is in the chat, or, or post it in the chat. That works as well. You can see uh, we already have some items in here. Yeah, so I see uh, time zone issues, frustration with technology. Yeah, lack of time management organization. So all these, all these types of things might impact engagement. Yeah, lots of tech challenges. Yeah, let's see our. Answer Garden's just starting to display on, see what else people have come up with. Yeah, for some reason it's very slow. Oh, there, it is. there we go. It might be those connectivity tissues that people are mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a variety of platforms to learn. Yep. Zoom fatigue, I see in the chat. <laughs> That's a real thing. We're all feeling it, aren't we? <laughs> Maybe today we call it blackboard fatigue. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the advantage to switching platforms and you don't get Zoom fatigued. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very slow. I don't know why it's yeah. going on. That's okay. 
Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay. Oh, wow. It's really populating here. Comments. I see access to technology and attendance yep. are like the two biggest one in online fatigue. Yeah. Yeah, family interruptions. I, I do think that um, that's that's for sure. Some reasons why people don't turn on their mic or their camera, right? All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Lisa now. Okay, so as you can see, there's lots of challenges or possible challenges that students might have. Um, so one of the solutions we had, and I'm going to skip right to our liquid syllabus, to show you it's um, this. Okay, now it keeps opening on the wrong page. It's the wrong screen. Let me drag it over here. I don't know why it keeps doing that. All right. So one of our the, the solutions we came up with was something called the liquid syllabus. Um, and this is an example of one that we did. To share. The people beforehand. Uh, based. Is Lisa still with us? Yeah. Uh, that's what I wasn't sure of because I can't hear her either. It looks like from the chat that people cannot hear Lisa. Is that correct? Okay. I think she's. Is that's correct. Yeah, I think okay. she's. And she's trying is to there, join in. Okay, because you could, if we can switch the sharing over, one of us can take over if the we students, need to. Which is important. Oh, there she is. Yeah, she was reconnecting. Yeah. But yeah, if everyone else could turn off their if everyone else could turn off their webcams, that might help a bit. Okay. So Lisa, you had cut out unfortunately and we didn't hear the last few minutes. Okay. Uh, the last thing I said. <laughs> I just turned um, off you, my, you off my, just, my you, video. Yeah, you, you had just yeah, you had just introduced the syllabus like it hadn't opened yet. Okay. All right. So I'll step back then. Um, so the advantage, so this was our solution. It's called, we called ours uh, for, well, I know I called it for, and I believe Kim did the same. We called it more of a welcome page. And the idea is that it's um, a way to welcome the students to your course before it even starts. Um, we've heard, we heard of this term, the liquid syllabus from a, an a instructor in the States uh, named Michelle Pacancy Brock. She actually coined the term the liquid syllabus. Um, and basically, it's an accessible website um, that students can access before class. It's responsive, so they can look at it on any device that they have. Um, and it creates that welcoming environment. Um, the nice thing about using a, something like Google Sites is what we used, but using a web page is that you can put in visuals, you can put in pictures, um, videos, Anything that you feel that would be uh, useful for the students to um, to know about your course and about you. Um, as you can see on the, on the screen, each one of us created um, a video introducing ourselves. And this is for the, um, we first presented this at TEST 2020. And so we sent this out ahead of time so people could understand who we were and, and what, what we were doing, like what were your challenges we were answering. Um, again, the the nice thing is you can put anything you want in it. You can your learning outcomes. You can, as you can see, here's our uh, the answer garden um, that we. I don't know. I don't know if I refresh if it'll refresh, but 
the beauty is you can embed things right in interactive elements right into your web page. So if you wanted to ask the students a question beforehand, the, the, the cool part is that you could, you could embed it right into your page. You can put videos in. So I think one, I'm not sure, Marie, if it was you, but I know that somebody's put in like a, a trailer for a, a course, sort of saying this is like a video about what the course is all about, which is kind of nice. Um, and sort of why we chose to use and to incorporate this ahead of time is by sending it out ahead of time, students get to know you. Um, and being able to use graphics and links and links to various, um, you know, supports for the students, they can find out how they can get help if they need it before they have to worry about using being part of the course. Um, as I said, it's responsive. responsive. So um, when I looked at, I think almost 30% of the students that I sent out my liquid syllabus to, um, they used it on, they looked at it on their phone. And the nice thing about using Google, Google uh, sites is it's responsive for whatever device you're using it on. And so, uh, you know, this term more than ever, I think students were feeling very, very anxious about um, coming to school remotely. So by providing something that made them feel comfortable, I think was really important. And I thought what we could do is, um, we'll come back to the Padlet, is take a look at each of our, our actual uh, liquid syllabi so that you can understand what, how this approach, how this, um, what this looks like in, re, in sort of live form. So this is an example of mine. Um, it's, it was my introduction to business math. I had an introduction about me. I actually used um, Adobe Spark to, to create a fun video um, about me, a little bit course description, some learning outcomes, um, so not really, I mean, it's not really meant to take the place of the formal syllabus that we have to all provide to our students, but it's certainly more responsive and it, it can include extra things that you don't normally put in, um, you don't normally put in the, um, the syllabus in, in paper form or in PDF form. So I talked, I actually gave students a link to resources, text book information so that they and, and where to get help and what kind of technical skills they need needed to have before the class started so oops not that one Kim you want to talk about yours if it if it decides to show up there it is yes um, so I just wanted to answer a couple questions in the chat um, we did send out okay we sure. did send out via email and uh, also posted in our course shells um, I think, um, I know, Lisa, you probably couldn't see the chat. People were um, a little confused. Lisa was actually walking you through um, the course syllabus. Um, so we made a syllabus for our presentation in the same way we would make a syllabus for our courses. So that's what you were seeing. Um, so I'll just pop back over to, uh, this is the one that I made for um, my healthcare terminology course. And I used uh, Lisa's template. And so I think that that's a really cool function that if you wanted to have one say within your program and you want it to, it to look fairly uniform, everyone in the program could use uh, the same template. And so if you scroll down, you can see I had um, the welcome video as well. Uh, course description. And so I chose a little bit different coloring than Lisa did to put my own uh, sort of personal <laughs> touch to it. Uh, of course, it talked about how my course uh, would work. And if you keep scrolling down just a little bit, one of the things with this particular course with healthcare terminology is um, we had added an open educational resource to it. And so I just think this is like such a wonderful pairing with an OER because then students not only have um, an opportunity to see what their expectations around the course is, but they can also get right into their resource and begin to look through it and read through it. I don't know if I were to have my anxiety reduced as a student, that's something I appreciate being able to read the first uh, couple chapters ahead of time. And then of course you can see I have uh, very similar links because I did use Elisa's template to the technical um, supports that are available at our college that we share and the types of tech we would be using. Yeah. 
And then the evaluation plan, I think we're almost near the bottom, right? So the students would know how they were being evaluated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I really think the personal touch of having the video and the, you know, what to expect, I expect from you and what to expect from me were ways to um, start to be, build a community and start to build that connection with students. So there's a few more questions that came in. Um, yep. Definitely, we can I can share the uh, the Google if you uh, have a Google um, account and you want a, a copy of this particular like sort of the the layout of the of this Google site. I can certainly share that with you. You can um, I'll, I'll make sure that well our emails are on the on the uh, test 2021, which I know has already been posted in the chat. Um, so for sure, I can share that um, and as well as if um, we could talk about embedding and that's more of a the, the, that was a Google thing like the Google allows you to embed within and if we maybe at the end if we can go I can uh, go into actually the, the admin part and show you where that is or I can certainly sit down with you ahead of, uh, offline and help you through that and Marie <laughs> So if I could just share my uh, welcome package as what I called it with my students, and I designed it for my anatomy for health services, which is a third semester course. And just like Lisa and Kim, my main objective was to get in front of the concerns my students would have. Address those before the course started, give them that opportunity and a safe place to go through my, sil my syllabus, not the formal college one as Kim has mentioned, but the opportunity to look through it and to really know a little bit about me. That was one of my major goals and also how the course was going to play out. I did a welcome video if we scroll a little bit further down onto the document and I also use Google Sites. It's really accessible on so many devices, and that's why I really was mindful around how would my students be viewing this? What kind of devices would they be using to view my material? So everything was built with that in mind. So I have a welcome video, and then I have a little bit about myself. And then as I scroll down, I gave them some insights about the course and my teaching philosophy. So it was really helpful for them to see those kinds of pieces to engage. And the other thing, if we scroll a little bit further down in the document, I'm not sure, Lisa, if we're able to do that. Awesome. There's my teaching philosophy and the course layout plan. Kind of a quick snapshot of what the next 14 or 13 weeks would look like for my students to before even the first session began. So that's what's so great about that is they come with this information, at least they've had a chance to see something that when we start up, that anxiety hopefully is a little bit less because they see the course layout plan. They know what the intention is, how often we'll meet in this remote environment. If we scroll a little bit further down in the document, then I went into the course description. Again, a, just a quick overview and the learning outcomes. And then I got into the first week at a glance. This is what you can expect to see in our course for the first week. The resources that we'd be using, because I know a number of students access to, to the textbook, access to the resource is often a great concern. And if they, I know they get the book lists from our colleges, respectively our institutions, but not necessarily do they see all the options that we can provide in this document for acquiring the resources. And then I went into, uh, my grading philosophy, what the grading schematic would be in this course, and then I went into resources on the second page of the document, so college support systems, and a whole variety of different ways to connect uh, with me. And then finally, I put in a survey to ask them to provide feedback around the document. Yeah, on the fundamentals page, you'll see additional information about it. I'm not sure if we can open that up. Okay, so that gives you, I guess, a view of all three of our liquid syllabus and how we all came up with maybe a different approach, but also very similar approaches. 
So the next item I would like to share with you is kind of where I left off. At the end of my liquid syllabus, I put in a survey asking my students anonymously to give us some feedback about this document, getting it ahead of time, but also to do a check-in with them. We often do check-ins at different parts throughout the semester to see how they're doing, but this was an opportunity to have them check in ahead of time. Tell me what concerns you're feeling about the remote environment. So the by the time I met them on the first session, we already had identified some concerns that I could address at that first session or come up with strategies. So some of the feedback I got from the anonymous survey, and I did get a lot of participation in this, was many were saying they found it helpful, it, ha it helped for them to know ahead of time what they needed. We also heard they liked it, but I also built in, the. and again, it was a short survey, I didn't want it to be overwhelming, but what we also built in was an opportunity for them to say um, about, give me back the feedback about the liquid. It's a work in progress, as I'm sure it is for everybody who develops this for the very first time, was the opportunity to find out what we could do to enhance it. The next time I put my liquid syllabus together for the next semester, I had some great feedback. But it, And what I also did, taking the feedback a step further, in week four, now that we've started the course and we've had a couple weeks into the program, I've asked them to again give feedback on the liquid syllabus very briefly. Now what would you add to this? What would you refine? What would you enhance? So that on the screen, as you can see, populating are some of the pieces of the actual feedback we did get. I will now turn it over to Lisa to talk about some of the analytics we received when we did this as well. All right, so one of the advantages of using the Google Sites is that you can get access to analytics. And it allowed you sort of allowed me to see um, what were the students actually looking at this and when were they looking at it. So I think I had 40% of the students already looked at the um, and the web page or the welcome page um, within 24 hours of me sending it out. Um, and then by the time class school started on September 8th, um, everybody had looked at it and some of them had actually gone back to it. Um, so that was kind of a neat thing to know um, and to track that they're actually using it. Another thing that we were able to find out is how they're accessing it. So what devices are they using? Um, so you can see here that 26% of them, almost 27% um, came through a mobile device, 38% were from desktop. You can also see Chrome, Safari, so I know that 21% of my students are accessing it with an, a Mac versus um, a PC. So it's it's kind of, a it, it, again, it's very, it's all generic, like you don't know who, who it is, but you do know some general information, and that's strictly by going to the web page it's tracking it um, the other thing uh, I could also see is how they got to my welcome page so uh, 45 of them or 77 percent came from my email so the direct the direct link that I gave them um, but some of them waited I also posted a copy like a link to it in my econ Estoga, which is our desire to learn um, learning management system I could see that they were even though they were already in the course where they got they get a lot of the same information, they still went and looked at it. And sometimes they went and looked at it again, uh, which was uh, very informative as well. It just lets you know that there's, they found it useful. Um, so that was something that was free and part of the um, Google Analytics. Marie, I think they're passing back to you, Marie. Yes, it is. Um, thank you, Lisa. Not showing my. So did that even show? It did. I, I can see it on my about. screen. I'm just seeing everybody. I'm not seeing it. Show. Yeah, it did show. Yep. Oh, okay. It's saying reconnect. Okay, good. Because it's showing me not. I'm having a real upload issue today. 
because it's saying that I'm weak. So my apologies. Um, but if you can, can you see the screen now? Yes. Where it says share your thoughts. Okay, good. Okay, just continuing on. Thank you, Lisa. We wanted to invite you to share your thoughts on what we have been working with this semester and just the idea and the concept around the liquid syllabus. It's an opportunity. We actually created a Padlet that you can go in and actually put in your thoughts around this. Can we navigate to the Padlet as a link? So I did put the link to the entire uh, syllabus in for people earlier. Right. I'll do that again. I'll do that again too. Okay, so there's the link. Yeah. Lisa, are you able to take us there on the screen? <laughs> do you want to? Or you want to go through the liquid syllabus? Uh, you're cutting out. So the share your thoughts when you navigate is just three quarters of the way down, just below the okay. answer garden. You will see share your thoughts. And okay. we've got three questions that we're asking. So you can even respond in the chat if you'd like. Do you think the liquid syllabus would be a solution? issues today I'm trying can you hear me it's oh, what's it saying it's giving me some grief okay so one of the internet to all of a sudden my internet has gone down to So one of the questions we're asking you to consider is, do you think the liquid syllabus would be a solution to the challenges identified in engaging online remote learners? And how would it be a solution? A second question that we're asking, and again, you can answer in the chat if you think this would be helpful. How could you use this in your own practice? That's our second thought. And finally, any additional thoughts? or comments you'd like to share. So we're going to give you a few minutes to consider those questions. Okay, so we're seeing them populate on the screen. And then we're, we're going to show you if you can even go externally to our site you will see that we also have gift bags for you. We have a link to our own syllabi that we created, as well as a link to the Google Sites to get started, as well as a link to the, there we go, there's the gift bags, there's a template to get started, and then a link to the Google Sites. It was really, I will speak from a perspective of a learning curve, I was able to pick up how to use the Google Sites very easily. It wasn't highly complex. It was very user friendly, very fluid, and that give, gave us a lot of perspective. So now I believe we're going to open up, you know, the chat and questions, Q and A. Unless Lisa or Kim, did you need to want to add anything else to our? No, I. I'm, uh, I think that was, yeah, I'm, uh, I think it'd be good to open up to questions. Yes. Okay, so let's look at this. So a uh, question here is, um, did, did you have uh, to clear using Google Sites with your admin? <laughs> so, no. no. <laughs> Also to uh, continue on with Kim, I didn't, and I did that, I guess, purposefully because it is something that I was providing external to Georgian. So I thought it was my opportunity to share my thoughts on my course that I'm going to be delivering with my students through Georgian College. But I thought it was the opportunity to have something external to the college as well. I, 
And um, Marie, if I can build off that, I sort of remember this came up at the test conference um, where we're thinking about, because uh, we're calling it a syllabus, it doesn't replace the syllabus. It's really more, probably a better title for it would be a welcome page. You know, it's an, a, a, t a chance for the students to meet us via video. Uh, and I know earlier I was answering some questions around accessibility, and I, I hope I interpreted your question correctly, was you were wondering if people were overwhelmed and didn't pick it up in the email, were we revisiting this? And I, I, I think we all did this. We certainly uh, put it in our announcement page. And on the first week of class, I mentioned if you hadn't received the email, please, you know, click this link. I had a link in my course shell where people could then go in and view the syllabus in the first week if they had not received it earlier, like the week before when I sent it out. I yeah. know, I know, and Lisa, you sent it out. You did it a different way, did you not? And what do you mean? Like I, I sent it out. I just pulled the uh, emails from the students, like my class list and sent it out to them. Oh, I thought you had secondary emails as well. I did. Yeah. Uh, when in um, in our, I guess our employee portal, when we when we lo download the class list, we can also an email list. It all we can also get their personal emails because most of them are not going to have access to their their uh, Conestoga, in our case, Conestoga email, school email, um, if they're first semester, for first years. Um, so I wanted to make sure that it didn't, it didn't um, take until they got to class to be able to see it. I wanted them to see it ahead of time. So I sent it to the, the email they had on file. And I, I just noticed in the, uh, I'm just noticing in the uh, Padlet, um so at, at about making it a program welcome and i'm going to be um becoming a program coordinator uh, next semester or or re-becoming because i was program coordinator before of this particular program and i'm going to do this exactly that create a program welcome for the new students because quite often they don't know where where to go um and how to get help so uh, that's the, the, the thought i was going to do for next semester in addition to doing it for classes Yes, yeah, so, um, and I see uh, around the accommodation, is there a statement about supporting accommodation? So that that's a really good point. Um, we certainly put in all of the tech pieces and how to, uh, I'm just actually reviewing mine to see if I did that. Uh, certainly um, at Conestoga, they have access to a student success advisor that is sort of the conduit to whichever resources they need. And that is certainly something that if I did not put in this time, I will definitely be put putting it in January. So thank you very much for putting that in the chat. That's a very good point. And I think that's what's yeah. so great about this is that it is a work in progress. And just from the feedback from our colleagues, just sharing our liquid syllabus with professionals such as yourself, we get some real interesting insights on how we could refine it. I'm going to keep refining mine every single semester until forever, I guess that's the best way to phrase it. I see a question from Heather about um, ad the potential for linking to other uh, sites. And for sure, you can link to wherever you want. Um, I, I linked in mine to the My Learning Portal at our school, which is it's a support page for students, not only for um, learning, but there's also um, health like you know uh, counseling and other types of supports within that portal so um I, I made sure that yeah you can it's a great way to be able to to, to give them those links that they, they need before um they come to class so that if they do get in trouble they know exactly where to go but i, I do like the accessibility statement makes sense too because then you're you're telling them that you're you're going to support them any way they need it uh, Gina bring, brings another good point about a land acknowledgement. So thank you, Gina. That is also something that I will be adding to mine. There's another question here. Once you post your Google Sites, is it accessible to anyone, including people who aren't students? So I think if they have access to the link, I would say yes. Anything to add there, Lisa or Mary? I believe that is the case as long as they have you could make it private, I do believe, because you have choices of how you share the link. At least that's what I experienced. But if you just create a, you know, share to anyone, it could be as long as they have the link, they can go in. 
yeah, I do believe that's, you, that you set that up when I'm just looking now. So I guess maybe I can pose that question back. Um, what types of concerns would you have if someone did um, get a hold of that link? So what, what kinds of things would be on there that we might be concerned other, like, is there a concern or was that just sort of like a general question? I think it must have been a general question. Yeah. I noticed, Deb, you posted I, a question. I see you provided a template. Thank you for that. If we email you, can you send us a copy that can be edited? You mean of our own syllabi uh, that we created for our courses? I just need a clarification on that. Yeah, on the bottom of our, our screen, we, we do talk about having that. Like, there's a... Um, uh, a generic one that I think that caught yeah I called it a copy of a welcome page and if somebody wants access to that I can give them copy access which will allow them to make a copy and edit it themselves so reflecting on another question if it's public it's hard to ask students for feedback that's a good point um, for me I had my survey linked to something else that they they needed to log into so I guess yeah. that's another layer of consideration these are all great points though about they, them getting into different places that they, maybe perhaps they shouldn't be or somebody else shouldn't be in And James talks about the, uh, adding full, you know, making sure there's no full names. And yeah, I, I don't, that's a good point. I don't want to see, uh, uh, you know, as, as far as on the liquid syllabus, if there's an input box, you want to make sure it's anonymous so their names don't appear on it because it is public. Um, and also the course outline proprietary information. I, I don't know that, I mean, the links to a, a, um, like a textbook, they still have to have all the access. We don't, it's not like we're giving out a textbook if it's a, if it's not a free textbook. Um, so I don't think there was anything that would be considered um, proprietary because it's mostly just information about the course and that's um, any student can take a copy of their course outline. I've seen them online too. <laughs> Um, I was just responding to the, the last one. Um, I don't know if, if you're on Twitter. We had some Twitter action when we um, did this before, and, and I'm sorry, I wish I had it up. I don't remember the um, person's name, but they had actually added um, what to expect graph with a workload, which I thought was awesome uh, and something I would like to add to mine. So I think that sort of speaks to uh, what students can expect, and to see that visually in a graph would be excellent. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's see if I can find it while we're answering questions. That was a really needed application of it. I'm adding the workload graph as well to mine because I just thought it was such a great perspective. Because again, it, as much information as we can provide our students to get in front of their courses, the less anxiety they're going to have, the more hopefully engaged they will be with us when we have that first session with them or when our course goes live and they can start going through things. I just found that I didn't get near the amount of emails at a typical startup that I usually get. I found that my students came to the first session almost equipped with, okay, I got a general idea. And I'm one of the, the ones I believe Lisa mentioned that put a course trailer in. So all of my courses, I develop like a, a movie trailer, kind of this is the coming attraction. And I'm amazed at how many watch it and enjoy that. And I infused it right into my syllabus, my liquid syllabus. So yeah, and I, I'm just, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> without seeing okay. people, I can't tell when they're going to talk. <laughs> so. <laughs> So uh, what I would say building off Marie's is that uh, in my welcome video, if, if you do have an opportunity to view it, I did say to students that I was concerned about um, how I was, without seeing them, 
uh, how we were going to build that community. And I had told them to watch for invitations to come and meet with me. And then I ended up having um, quite large um, sections. So what I did was a virtual drop-in where I sent another video out on my course shell. And that virtual drop-in, instead of calling it uh, office hours, I called it a virtual drop-in. I had 50 students attend. I have never had 50 students attend any kind of office hour. And I really directly link it to sending out this syllabus ahead of time so they were anticipating uh, that I would be offering something like that. I had one great comment in our student appraisal of teaching like we did a quick sat at the beginning of the, the, the I think it was week four and one person said because um, I, I you know uh, the, the particularly referenced this welcome page and said that it made her feel that him or her, I'm not sure if it was because it was anonymous, um, him, made him or her feel that I was uh, friendly and that I'd be willing to help them if they had problems. And which is like, that was like golden to my ears to hear that kind of thing, which is awesome. I had similar feedback to that as well. And, and I almost felt like when I had my first session with my students that they already knew me to some level. And they felt comfortable even in our first session to engage right away. I didn't have to, you know, keep asking prompting questions. And, and I felt the same as you felt, Lisa, in terms of it was directly related to the opportunity to look through it first and get a feel. Yeah, um, and so I had a similar, I, I, and I shared this at test that uh, I had actually sent out the incorrect link in my first email. And I thought, oh, great, what a great first impression I've just made. But in fact, uh, I had students um, email right away, right? The emails came right away. We can't open the link. We can't open the link. And I had a, I asked a student, one of the students first to respond if they would troubleshoot with me. And then by the time we were done, she was like, this is awesome. I'm so glad you're going to be my professor. So even though in my head I thought, well, what a complete disaster. I set out the wrong link. Uh, it ended up being a connection that I made with students. And they seemed to be... Um, very forgiving. And then I often think maybe that showed them that I wasn't perfect at the tech. And so it would be okay that they wouldn't be perfect at the tech. And that just sort of set the stage for that connection. Mindful of the time, um, how many more minutes do we have, Louisa? <laughs> So, I mean, we're at 11.47, so there is still a bit more time. I know that uh, I'll just quickly mention, so Heather C., you mentioned the idea of perhaps a community of practice, so I don't wanted to mention that maybe there's a, a moment that we can start talking about that. There's still a bit more time. Um, I don't know if we, I'm sure we mentioned this, but um, at the bottom, we have the references to Michelle Pekansky Brock's site. And when you go to her blog post, there's like a ton of examples of how people have used this. So if, you know, this is just three ways that we used it, right? But there are tons of examples of how you could, you know, use this in a different way. So I'm just looking at, uh, so Emily says, so I'm wondering how this will build that connection versus Blackboard. I think it was regard to an online only course where there's no uh, synchronous sessions. Um, the liquid syllabus was developed by Michelle as a way to connect with her students that are were online where there was no, um, there was no synchronous sessions. Um, that's sort of where this came from. And she actually has extended that by doing these crazy little videos on her iPhone um, where she talks about how, you know, how is, how are dead, you know, why are deadlines important? Or she'll talk about, you know, she actually did this whole thing on cooking. She made, made some soup or something and it was, it was pretty funny, but it was, I, the idea was they were short and they were designed to help students understand why we asked them to do what they do, <laughs> which was pretty neat. Um, so this is sort of like one step, uh, definitely. And I'm just looking, we have some interest in it, setting up a team channel. <laughs> yes, we do. And I think it would be a great place and a safe place to kind of have these 
discussions and these building community pieces. Yeah. Yeah, I can certainly set someone something up and share it when maybe when they share the video, share the link. Yeah, that would be great, Louisa. This is great. We've got lots of quizzes. <laughs> Heather, don't be sorry. This is great. Um, We've just got a minute or so, I think, left in our time period. Does anybody have additional questions or something we haven't addressed? Thank you. That's great, Gina. Thank you. So we'll stay online a, a little bit longer, but um, I want to really thank everyone for joining us today. In particular, thank you, uh, Lisa and Kim, for a really um, exciting uh, presentation. I mean, what you've done is really, um, you know, you can tell there's a lot of excitement, you know, by the potential of, of how this could enrich online and remote students and how you've organized your your you know the the gift bags as well is a it's a wonderful gift for for all of us so thank you for uh, the really great presentation and i want to um just uh, close with um two things so first of all in the chat there was some discussion about a you know a i don't know if i'll call it a community of practice but um some way of staying connected to keep this conversation going so we'll get to that um, I'll work with the moderators to, to follow up with all participants to see, you know, what interest uh, is there. But um, yeah, I can organize something that's relatively simple, I'm sure. Uh, last, I'm going to put into the chat our facilitator sign up. So if you have an idea you'd like to share, um, Lisa, you mentioned maybe you'd be up for doing a Google session, a Google site se uh, session next uh, year, which would be fantastic. But there's that link again, and feel free to share it with your, your colleagues as well. Um, this information sharing across colleges is wonderful. And something we've seen a lot of this round is the cross-college um, collaborative sessions. So um, there's a lot of great interactions and cross-pollinization happening. So very exciting stuff. So thank you, everyone. Um, have a great uh, rest of your Friday. And uh, we hope to see you in the new year. So stay tuned. There's more uh, winter webinars to come.